Leave me alone! Ah! Akira! What is going on, guys? Spooky guy 444 here, coming at you with a heaping pile of sparkly golden leaks. We have news from several stores. We have unreleased animatronics to talk about. We got so, so much to tackle in right now. And I'm super excited to get into it. There really isn't much for me to say. I'm sure a lot of the things you may have seen already, but I actually wanted to get my thoughts out on this stuff because there's just so much to take in. So without further ado, this is going to be a first impression review, of course, of all this stuff I'll be going over. There's gonna be some bads, there's gonna be some greats. I'm excited to get into it. So without further ado, I'm Spooky Guy 444 and let's get into all the news. So we're gonna start off with the smaller things and work our way up to the bigger things, reveals from stores even as small as Joann's all the way up to the Big Bang that was Costco just two days ago at the time of release. Let's talk about Joann's. So Joann's, not a lot of people have been talking about this and probably for good reason because there's nothing new. It's all old stuff. There's a few interesting little skeletons here and there but it looks like we'll be seeing the same old, same old. The eight foot DGI skeleton with the projection eyes is back along with the spellcasting witch and probably one of my favorite props of 2020, the scaredy scarecrow from Costco. I think it's pretty cool to see that these are back, but I won't be picking them up just because none of them are really my thing. Don't quite need them. They also all come in at around four to $500, which is insane. However, Joann's does do discounts a lot, so they will be significantly cheaper, especially as the season goes on. Coming up next, we have At Home's uh, little leaky reveal. We had a catalog photo surface online just a week or two ago, and in this, we see a lot of interesting things. As you can see that we have items such as the Costco version of the Towering Wolf that's coming back, which is actually pretty cool as I am a fan of that one, especially I like it more than the Depot version. We see a six foot skeleton with red eyes. This is a completely new animatronic if it even is one, and I'm actually pretty interested to see what that one is. I think that it could definitely have some potential, maybe even hold up to the likes of Grimm, but we'll see. We have plenty of inflatables to go around. We have a lot of stuff, but the main thing I want to talk about here is the large influx of 12 footers. There is, off the top of my head, because I'm not looking at the image right now, there's five different ones. There's two Reapers, one of them being old. One of the worst props last year, the 12-foot Fire and Ice Reaper. Don't even get me started. We have a 12-foot Witch, which is, I believe, the one from Costco last year. And then we have a 12-foot Scientist. Why? I, I... Up next, we actually have a few leaks from Walmart. We have some few interesting things actually coming in from the main decor section. We haven't seen any life sizes as of yet, but... Seasons is coming back with classic molds. As you can see, there is the original cauldron and the original misting pumpkin from Spirit from like 2004. It's getting resurrected almost 20 years later, and I think that's awesome because I am actually a pretty big fan of those. And I actually might pick up the pumpkin. I, I think I might do it because I just think it's super cool that Seasons is kind of doing a big thing here. And speaking of Seasons, we have animatronics from Seasons. We have the Toxic Reaper and a few posable skeletons. The Toxic Reaper is quite interesting. Will I pick it up? Probably not because it just looks too bland for my personal opinion, but it is outdoor rated, which I think is interesting. And I like the color scheme that it's going on, but we don't have enough information on this one yet. But as of now, just off of the looks, I'm feeling a decent six. Sam's Club. I never got to talk about this one because it leaked after the duo, but there is a 12 foot reaper at Sam's Club. Now, I won't even lie, I'm really getting sick of the 12 footers. There's just too many of the reapers. That's, I think, three this year alone, which is a lot. So with that being said, I like it, and it actually has a good bit of animation, but it's just not one that I'm planning to pick up. It does have a pretty good price at 250, and it is outdoor rated, of course, along with the jazz duo being outdoor rated, which I think is fantastic, but not huge on this one in my humble opinion. I'm feeling a decent seven. Brick Thunder's final animatronic being showcased for Halloween costumes was revealed just last week as well with the drop down banner clowns. I think with this one, this is actually probably the first or second best thing from the lineup so far, but that's not saying a lot. The idea that Brick had presented here, I think is actually pretty cool. I would actually love to see this done by not Halloween costumes because I think this is pretty neat. It is this clown banner and 
right inside of it is these two clowns that drop down and it's pretty quick but i just don't like how it looks and the audience just eh it's okay but it, the looks are the biggest issue for me in my humble opinion if it was just one clown and it wasn't on a plastic black sheet of paper like i don't know what that is it's not too too bad but man, i'm feeling a decent five on the banner clown the iconic circus of savannah has leaked not one not two but I think at this point, well over 10 different seasonal visions animatronics. I'm gonna talk about the small ones and then I'm gonna get up to the big boys. Many reiterations of Pesky and even I believe Stitches, but both of these variants are ones that we will probably never see come to the light of day unless it comes to places like say Halloween costumes or a Joanne Fabrics or something like that. Cause none of these are super cool. They're not super significant. Actually, one of these is one that we had seen at this point three years ago in the SVI HQ, but we never got a look at its face, and now we do have a look at its face, which I think is pretty cool. We have a Butcher Clown. I don't like this thing at all, and I'm glad that it's not coming out, because I just, I don't know. I said this in a, in a discussion that I had with some people. I think that the Butcher Clown should have either been a Butcher, or it should have been a Fat Clown. I don't think the two should have mixed. I just think it doesn't look right. It looks goofy. It's not necessary. It's 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 not good looking. The skin face that it has looks like a mask. I don't like it. I hope it stays unreleased. And then we have the graveyard tombstone reaper thing. Now this thing is interesting to me because I don't hate it, but I also don't like love it. It's just kind of okay. Like I said, likely some of the stuff isn't gonna be releasing. But considering this one actually has like a decent product video, I think a store might get this and I'm theorizing Walmart or maybe even something like Target. But with that being said, the mouth moves, it has the digital eyes, but they aren't digital, they just steady on like the Target lights, which I think is strange. And then it has a tombstone and then it has the weirdest animation I've ever seen SVI try. It just, it doesn't look right on this prop. I get what they were trying to do, but I don't know. I think it should have had a different mech. I think something similar to the Techie Ghost Woman mech actually would have benefited a lot better, but I don't hate this one. It's a cute little child-friendly prop. Decent seven. It's not bad. I don't hate it. I like the tombstone. I like the idea, but I just think it could be executed. Whoa, it's a bit better. Artie the Clown. That is his name if you aren't familiar. This thing is extremely overhyped. Do I like it? Yes. Is it a strange concept? Absolutely. But I think it has potential, but just the fact that we don't even know what the audio is, or even like a even decent look at it, I think people are jumping the gun on this too quick and we don't even know if it's releasing for 2023. Artie has a moving mouth, body turn, the elbow turn, and the paint bucket has the same lighting effect that Demon Deathologist has, which I think is actually pretty cool. So I think out of all of that second line of uh, SVI leaks, I think that one is actually my favorite, but it's not an absolute must have. I think I'm feeling a decent seven on him as well. He has potential though, he does. I think that he could be great, just with a few tweaks here and there, but we'll see if he even drops. Finally, we have the craziness that was the Neon Ice Cream Clown. I'm sure you guys already know about this one. This thing was everywhere. This thing has so much lore that I honestly might even make a video on it myself because there's just so much to talk about with this thing. In short, Psychotic Circus tried to get this ordered from a factory that he found on Alibaba. And through that, they the factory almost in a way scammed him out of all the money because they weren't supposed to give it to him because this piece is going to Party City for the 2023 season. And because of that, everybody who ordered one of the 50 neon ice creams was basically refunded all the money because Party City sent him, take this with a grain of salt, a cease and desist order. But we'll see. I think it's too, too bad of an animatronic. I think it's pretty cool and I appreciate the hell out of what Savannah tried to do. I think that this was a super awesome opportunity to get just a limited amount out for just even a couple haunters. I think that's great. 300 was a little steep, but it came from a factory that tried to rob them. I think the concept is cool, but I think it needs a few tweaks. I'm not huge on the color scheme. As much as it is pop colorful and pops, it is pretty cool, but I think another color scheme like a blue and purple could have fit him better. And I do think that Hugs is a better of the Lunge and Clowns. I'm feeling a decent seven on the ice cream, but that isn't me being negative. I think it's an okay clown. I do. And finally, we have the Costco stuff. Woo! 
Yeah, baby! That's what we're here for. That's what I'm talking about. Costco blew it out of the water this year. Oh my goodness. Let me talk about the mid stuff though. So we have another variation of the dueling banjo skeletons, but this time they have a fiddle. I like the soundtrack that these have, but I have no desire to own these. And there is like six different variations of this exact same prop. So I'm very tired of seeing it because Costco has been getting it for the past five years. But either way, it's okay. It exists. I'm not gonna be upset if it's only in Australia or the UK. Decent six. It's hard to even judge that because it's a tabletop, all but, but whatever. Let me talk about my hot take. I don't like the Lungeon Clown. It's so ugly. And right now, rumors are saying that this is a Pan-Asian animatronic that is a reskin of the Nine Foot Big Lots Witch. And that prop is terrible. I do appreciate Pan-Asian for doing more outdoor stuff. I think that is fantastic and a step in the right direction. But Pan-Asian has not made a good prop since Fairy of the Dead. I think if they got rid of the big googly eyes and then just made like the black behind it, like his eyes, I think that would be awesome and he'd look way better. And then didn't have the motion. Cause at that point it's just like a cuddles the clown knockoff. That's what he is. Because he'll have like the arms going up and down. He'll have the moving mouth. He just won't have the body turn. And in my humble opinion, cuddles is better in almost every regard. Not a fan of this clown. I think it's pretty mid, decent for. It's, I don't like it. The Punk Rocker Skeleton. This thing is awesome. I am a huge music nerd, so I'm very heavily biased on this and the uh, musical skeleton duo from Sam's Club. So we have the skeleton with a guitar that is literally a tombstone, and he has a bunch of phrases. He has a super strong, I think, Australian accent, maybe British, I don't know. And it sounds awesome. And then he has like actual songs that he sings. I don't know how long they are. Maybe they're as long as they were in the video, who knows. It sounds so good. I love his audio and I just love, you know, the simple three animations that he has. They benefit him a lot. I love his design. He is awesome. Super, super cool. I really hope that this one does come to the US, but if it does, I won't be too, too sad because I just kind of want him for a queue line for like a haunt or like just a party. Strong eight, strong eight on the punk rocker skeleton. Second favorite prop of the year as of now favorite prop that come out in the past couple weeks and it is absolutely at the top of my priority list and if it does not come to the u.s i'm going to riot the mummy this thing is absolutely beautiful seasonal visions is literally reviving and putting the classic animatronic world into an absolute renaissance let me explain. In 2004, Jimmy made an animatronic called the Brain Monster. Classic prop. I'm sure if you're a haunter, you know what it is. It's a pretty iconic piece. That animatronic had eye movement, and it blinked, head turn, mouth movement, and then the arms kind of flapped, which is weird. But either way, with those animations, we hadn't really seen that much at all besides eye movement from the Prime Jimmy stuff basically until like 2011, 2012. And then Jemmy tried it again in 2017, but that was like the last one and that was the only two animations. Come to 2023 and this Seasonal Visions mummy has arms that move up and down, head turn, lights inside the head, eyes that turn, blinks, and it's all outdoor rated. And so is the punk rocker skeleton, by the way. Outdoor rated, this mummy is, and it's six feet tall. This mummy, as much as I love it, unbiased, this thing is huge. This is important. Not only is this the first mummy, six foot mummy prop that we have gotten in almost a decade, this thing is the first six foot life size to be outdoor rated that we've seen a video of. This is the first time that we've seen a six foot animatronic come with stakes. Like, oh my God, this thing is full body plastic. And it is a little expensive over in the, um, over in the other country, but I'm thinking it'll be a little bit cheaper. I think all of it will be pretty cheap if it comes to the US considering that Costco is wholesale. This mummy shouldn't cost too, too much. Same with the rocker. This thing is incredible. The detail is immaculate. While the audio is just grave grabbers, it benefits them and fits them very, very well. 
He has a full body plastic blumbo body. He's basically built very similar to Grimm, but now he's outdoor rated. The only thing that I have a con with this mummy is that its base is ginormous and that it doesn't have mouth movement, but I'm also glad that it doesn't have mouth movement because if it did, it probably would be latex and then it can't be used outside. This mummy is one of the best props of the year so far. One of the best props of the decade so far. I am genuinely feeling a 10. This mummy is fantastic. One of the best props of the decade. Absolutely. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this massive 2023 leak extravaganza review first impressions you already know how it is stay tuned we are almost at 3,000 subscribers make sure if you haven't already hit that subscriber button hit notifications like comment down below your thoughts on all this crazy stuff if we get to 3,000 i have a lot of big things planned returns of classic series live streams oh yeah live streams just a lot of stuff planned. I have a lot of big things in the plans as we go on throughout the season. But enough of me talking. I'm Spooky Guy 444. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. Stay tuned. I'll be dropping almost every week at this point. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.